What is going on, YouTube? PPS back. It is the 21st of February. We're coming at you guys for our YouTube Play of the Day video today. Um, I got two spots today. Decent uh, college basketball card. Uh, not anything too wild, right? We don't have any um, – we don't have, like, so many – ton of conferences in play today um obviously there's some pretty big ones big east um big matchup tonight um there's a couple other ones um on the slate that are that are pretty good spots um but you know where i'm going i'm going to the back both plays tonight um, i want to get started with the recap from yesterday and um we'll get it going um i don't even know how this ended up being even relatively close i think it was 20 to 21 with like two minutes and Minute left, and then and all of a sudden we see free time in. I talked about it in the in the video from before, right? We talked about how that happened at the end of the game last time, um, and I, I was getting a little nervous, not gonna lie. Um, but I felt like the the readers right, and we ended up. I think they just touched fifty. I think it was like fifty one points. So um, nice winner there on a small card. Had a really good day overall with college baseball stuff coming through as well. So um, that was um, good to see there. And I got to get into that bigger numbers with the profit there. 34 and 28 so far this year, 3.57 units profit. Um, and like I said, two plays today. Hoping we can get over that five unit mark again um, with another sweep um, here. So let's get it rolling here on play number one. And I'm going to head over to a team we haven't backed much this year. I'm going to Buffalo team total 79 and a half. Let me pull up my um, screen here for you guys. I want to make sure you guys obviously get to see that. Um, they are facing off against Central Michigan at home, minus 104, 79 and a half for Buffalo Bulls tonight. Um, and let's get into it a little bit. So first matchup, right, everybody wants to look at that first matchup, 78-87 overtime game. Um, it was 70 to 70 going into overtime there. But, again, it's been something I've talked about and preached these last couple weeks, right, how the home road splits are going to be huge in college basketball, way bigger than any NBA um, spots, right? So we look at Buffalo this year, and uh, so far this season, um, they're they're doing okay, not as good as last year, but they're averaging 80.2 points per game at home versus 72.5 on the road. Uh, obviously, that's a big discrepancy there. First one was obviously in um, Eastern Michigan there, and they've been really good um, at home so far this year. 75 points in every single game, but one in that game was against, or every single game but two, um, and that's, I think, seven and two. Uh, Kent State and Akron were the two teams that kept them under, and obviously those are the two best defenses in this conference. Um, we go to the Ken Palm rankings for Central Michigan. Um, they're the ninth worst offense, 214 ranked in adjusted defense um, with a 184 pace. Obviously, Buffalo, very well known for their pace, right? They're always top 10. This year is no exception. They are fourth in the country in terms of pace. Um, they want to run. They want to go fast. They want to just keep the pace up there, obviously, and that and that looks good for, for numbers here. They got four double-digit scores, Curtis Jones leading the way. Um, and what I really think is important here is just how poor – both these defenses are in terms of fouls, right? And that having those four double-digit scores is huge in a game like this. Both of these teams rank bottom 15 in terms of free throws attempted per game on the other side uh, for their opponent. So um, I think we're going to see Buffalo shoot much better in this matchup, right? We saw 70 points in the full um, game last time on 74 shot attempts through overtime there. But we saw 39% from the field, right? We saw 26% from three. They shoot 34% on the season. Free throws, 63%, um, which is obviously way lower than their season average there. Um, and, yeah, on, on the at home, like I said, it's going to be a huge difference. They shoot 72% uh, from the free throw line um, at home this year. One thing I do want to mention here, obviously, as well. Sorry, Siri just started turning on for some reason on my, on my watch there. Uh, but one thing else I want to mention was, Buffalo, 22 offensive rebounds last game when these two teams face off. There is going to be a huge, huge size discrepancy. Um, we see um, Buffalo playing Isaiah Adams and Hardnet, both of them getting about 30 minutes of run, both of them extremely good rebounders. Even Curtis Jones is averaging five rebounds per game, 6'5 guard. Um, he's been great for them. Like I said, the leading scorer there. But when we look at this side, right, you have Isaiah Adams playing fantastic. 
six six only, but he rebounds extremely well. And then obviously Hardnet being six eight, being an absolute beast down low, um, is going to be very much needed in this game here. Uh, I, I think Buffalo has the advantage pretty much everywhere. That first game I think might scare some people off, but we're seeing an eleven and a half point total after this Chippewas team just beat them, right? So. Um, I think that you're seeing Vegas kind of know what way this game is going to go. I, I think that this game is going to be closed down at the end. Um, but I think it's just going to be because of the pace and Buffalo's defense hasn't really been um, very stingy this year. Um, just looking at even just let's go, let's go at the top uh, four players here um, for um, Central Michigan. All four of them, um, 11 points, 15 points, 16 points, 18 points. All of them are guards. Um, and all of them play 30 plus minutes per game. So you really don't have many bigs here in terms of the following that um, they have Marcus Harding, who's 6'10, but again, got in foul trouble in that first game. And that offensive rebounds, obviously, they're going to be throwing a lot of bodies um, at you in Buffalo. So I love the Bulls today. Um, I, I don't want to touch that 11 and a half. I've been burned on those double digit spreads late. Um, that's why I've been doing mostly totals. Whether it be first half, team totals, those are where I've been sticking, and, and I've, I feel like we're a little bit more successful with that. So Buffalo team total over 79.5, minus 104 over on FanDuel. A little longer-winded one there for sure. Um, this one should go a little bit quicker because I believe we actually had the same bet earlier this season. 72.5 to the over, Bowling Green, Miami of Ohio. Um, I think... I am actually very sure we made the same bet earlier this year. Um, Miami of Ohio ranks 15th worst in terms of adjusted defense. Ken Palm reigning um, 188 in tempo. So right down in the middle there. Bowling Green, obviously they run. They want to run. They want to gun the whole time. Top 100 in pace, 335 in adjusted defense. So they actually are better defensively. And that's tough to do when you're 335 adjusted um, so far this year. Looking in terms of what teams do well here, obviously we like the pace a lot. Um, but what I do like to look at is obviously first points, first half um, points per game. We look at Miami. Miami of Ohio ranks right in the middle, like 160 um, in terms of points per game here. Um, we look at this number at home. They're obviously way better. 36 per, points per game at home um, versus 30 on the road. Obviously this is in um, Miami of Ohio here. So we like to see that Bowling Green is just so fast that we're going to probably be able to do really whatever we want here. They're actually better on the road, right? They averaged 36 points per game in the first half overall, only 34 at home, but 38 on the road. So obviously that kind of leans us a little bit more towards this one. This is a perfect matchup, um, in terms of what, what side these teams play well at, um, just looking at numbers, right? We like, we like to see um, good three-point shooting. Um, we like to see how teams guard the three-point ball, right? Bowling Green on the road, 35% from three. Uh, Miami of Ohio, we're seeing 32%, but 34% at home. So obviously we're seeing a little bit of a pop-off um, or a little bit more of a boost when we are at home. Neither of them very good um, in terms of like the, the full country there. But with this, with this pace, I think we should be okay. Um, looking at their first matchup, um, we obviously talked about this exact game last time, um, and Bowling Green Bowling Green ended up uh, winning 83-73, um, and we saw that first half pop over there with 82 points. Um, so we did end up cashing that the first time through. But again, we look at this number, um, we saw a lot of pace. We saw some good shooting um, from the Bowling Green side. They ended up scoring 83 points, but they shot 43% from three. Don't expect that to happen again. Um, Bowling Green shot 92% from the free throw line. Don't think that's going to happen again. Those are two pretty high numbers. But what I do think is going to um, improve here, Miami of Ohio is moving home, and they shot 17% from three and 62% from the line. So you can look at how well Bowling Green played there and say, hey, that's not going to happen again. But I know Miami of Ohio is not doing that again, right? We're not going to see um, those types of numbers um, from a Miami of Ohio team that does score the ball um, much better than they play defense. We'll, we'll put it that way there. But – like a couple guys in this matchup, right? We saw um, Larry at 17 points per game here. Um, so obviously he's going to be leading the way. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to continue to have Bowling Green want to just run and gun this whole time there. Um, it sucks, unfortunately, that we have uh, 
uh, Toledo facing off against Akron, which is a very, very tough matchup, and I don't even want to touch that one. So we're going to the MAC and going to a different spot here. Obviously, we hope it uh, airs from the other side, who's averaging 17 points per game as well. So Bowling Green, first half over 72, minus 115. And then we're going to Buffalo, team total over 79.5, over on FanDuel at minus 104. So whew, long-winded show, guys. Sorry about taking a little bit more of your time. Hopefully, you guys have been making money with me. Hit that like button if you have. Hopefully you'll be riding up to the bank again with another sweep tonight. So have a good one, guys. Best of luck.